everyone, Teresa here. Welcome back to my channel, Lost My Thread. Today I'm going to be going through the instructions and construction techniques of the two overalls patterns because it is round two of the dueling dungarees. to tell you today that I have finished these overalls. Both of them are all done and ready to go, ready to wear, but you are not going to see them on my body until the next video because today I really want to focus on what they were like to sew, what the instructions were like, how they came together, and I will crown a winner of this round at the end. Now both of these, honestly, the instructions were pretty good, just on the whole. I felt like the instructions were clear, there were some nice illustrations to go with all of the instructions, it was always obvious to know what you were doing at each step. Neither of them really did I come to any points where I felt really confused, which is pretty good going in a sewing pattern as far as I'm concerned. I've had some confused moments in my day, but these were both pretty easy to follow. So these are the heyday dungarees. I will of course put some more pictures up so that you can see what they look like in more detail when I'm talking about certain elements, but these are the ones that I am referring to. I will say that there were a couple of niggles in the instructions here for me, nothing major, but things that I would have preferred to be different. I didn't always feel like the illustrations were to scale for the pattern, and maybe because they're designed for different sizes, and I know this pattern comes in kit sizes as well, so that could be part of what was going on there. One thing that I did definitely get a bit confused about, when you're making the straps for the overalls, you're meant to fold the pieces in half and press them, and then you're meant to fold the outsides in again. They've said two thirds of the way in, but when you look at the illustration, it's a lot more in than two thirds of the way in. It's almost all the way in. It kind of looks like an illustration that it's showing you that it's meant to fold all the way to the middle, or if you're gonna look at what it actually represents as sort of a relative to the size of the straps, I would say it's more like seven eighths from the image. So I did feel a little bit unsure whether to go with what the illustration showed or what the instruction said. I know really probably you should follow what the instruction said, but I just went with folding them all the way in. In all honesty, it turned out fine. I don't think it was a problem, but I would have preferred for that to be a bit more consistent. On that same instruction as well, when you're doing the initial folding the straps in half, I picked up that there was obviously supposed to be some kind of line to illustrate where that fold is meant to be. On my printout, it was literally invisible. I couldn't see anything. It just looked like a plain, big, wide strap. I couldn't see it had been folded or anything like that. When I looked on my phone, I'll put an image up so that you can see, I could just about make out when it was sort of zoomed into the full page, there was maybe something there. And as I zoomed into it, I could just about see that there was a dotted line, but that was very difficult to see on a screen. And even though I printed in best quality printing, it did not turn up on my print job. So, you know, I feel like if you're gonna have something in the, in the illustration, in the instructions, make it visible. Otherwise, there's no real point in having it there. These are the Jenny overalls by Closet Core Patterns. So when I'm referring to these, these are the ones that I'm talking about. I feel like these ones, the instructions were almost faultless. There wasn't very much that I could say that could have been better. There was a really nice extra thing that this pattern had that the Heyday Dungarees didn't. And that was in the instructions, they had some numbers or they were actually letters of the pattern pieces to demonstrate which pieces you're meant to be bringing together. And that was really not used throughout. It was only used when there were pieces that could be confused with others. There are definitely times, particularly like the pocket pieces where the front and the back side of the side pocket might look like the same piece. You can't quite tell which one is supposed to be which. And with the illustrations, it was so clear because because they had the letters on the pieces. I have to say though, just because I'm being completely honest with you guys, there was one point where the letter was incorrect and it was supposed to be referring to piece O and it said piece C on the illustration. I have actually emailed the pattern designer and they've said thanks for the heads up, so hopefully they'll update it in the future, but I just thought it was worth pointing out that yes, that stuff is useful when it's correct. 
The other thing that's really great about closet core patterns, and this is the case for all of their patterns across the board, is on their website they have a lot of additional resources. So they have extra information, extra tutorials, photographs as well next to those so you can follow along with a little bit more detail. They're a little bit more hand-holdy and I think it's really helpful particularly if it's the type of technique that's new to you or if you're newer to sewing. So for this particular pattern, they did have a whole instruction on how to do the overall buckles. They have how to do a side lap zipper and then also how to do this tabbed waistband as well. They also have a separate one for their jeans general tutorials about how to install this kind of jeans button, which is here, but also on the top of my overalls. All right, so now I'm gonna get into some of the specific areas of construction. I'll start with the bib. These are the Heyday dungarees. They have a, a fairly kind of straightforward front bib to put together. There's a little cute front pocket on there, and then you can either do these little loops here to tie the straps, or you can do a buttonhole there, and they give you instructions of how to do either. I personally prefer the look of the looped closure, but when you do use that technique, it does get really bulky in the instructions of how they tell you to construct this. So you have got lots of layers folded over together. So for the actual kind of front of the bib, you're going to be folding that over at the top and over again. So you've got three layers that you're going to be stitching through. You also have the loop that has been folded in the middle and then folded inside again. So you've got three layers of that that you're stitching together. You would then sew that onto the inside of the bib, stitch that in place. You're stitching through six layers. You then flip the little loops up again and then stitch over the top again. So you're gonna be stitching through nine layers at that point. They do have a whole separate little caveat that this is really bulky and it can be a little bit tricky to get the needle to go through it. They give you some tips on there as well, but I honestly feel like it's a more complicated and more awkward way to sew that together. And I also feel like it's probably not gonna look that neat. Even if you're an experienced sewist, I think there's a good chance that it's gonna end up looking really messy. So I chose to throw away that portion of the instructions and actually that way of putting together the overalls. And I decided to make a facing that goes all around the top of the overalls. I found this technique on the Like So Amazing website. There was a really good blog post from Sarah, who's the owner of that shop. And she talked through how she created a facing for her Heyday dungarees. And I basically just followed that tutorial to a T. And that was how I constructed a lot of the overalls. So it ended up affecting how I put these straps in. Let me show you. The facing basically means you've got this extra fabric going around on the inside. So on the original design, you're just going to have this folded up and folded up again. And then these seams at the side would be folded in and folded in again. This facing piece goes all the way around the inside. Oh, these loops are getting in the way. Hang on. Goes all the way around the inside, all the way the back as well. So that's a full facing all around kind of the top edge of this whole overalls. And I feel like it just gives such a really nice, neat finish. Where these loops have been stitched in place is all hidden underneath this facing, which I've actually <laughs> tacked down from installing the pocket. It slightly went over the edge, so I can't even flip it up to see you, um, to show you rather. But basically the edges of these are all inside, so you can't see them at all. And I just feel like that's such a beautiful looking garment on the inside, and I'm really glad that I used that method. So if I'm thinking about what the instructions tell you to do, I don't love their construction technique. I went off piste because I felt like I didn't like the way that it was going to look on the inside and I felt like it was just going to be so much more awkward. So not my favorite way of putting that together. So even though I'm happy with the way mine turned out, that wasn't by following the instructions. Something else that I felt like I had to point out, which I mean, maybe it's just me. <laughs> I don't know, but I had the most awkward time trying to tie these bows at the top of these loops because you just have a loop. I can show you when it's untied, but you just have a strap and a loop. And yeah, I can tie that through there, but then how that's supposed to become something secure. I had to look up how do people tie their overalls online on Google. 
and I eventually worked it out so that it looks okay. You can also just tie a knot, but I will say that if you tie a knot, then they're gonna be a lot more awkward to untie later on. But I guess if you just don't tie them super tight, that's kind of another way that they can look. And to be honest, I might slightly prefer that look, so I might end up going with that in the future. But yeah, it was, it just felt really awkward to try and do this with it, which is how it's designed up. One of the ways they tell you to tie it, I think they do say that this is a better way to tie it because it's easier to take on and off. The other thing that's really great about these overalls, I do need to say, is that these are kind of loose enough and big enough that you can actually pull them over your shoulders to take these overalls off. I was worried that that might not work for me. That was what the instructions said that you're meant to do, but I have sort of relatively broader shoulders, I think, and I also have bigger hips, quite significantly bigger hips than like my waist. And I was worried that things wouldn't really pull down for me to be able to go to the bathroom, but they came on and off really easily. So that worked out really well. That is a really nice feature of these overalls. Now for these Jenny overalls, it was a pretty similar construction for the front bib, but they did mention that you might prefer to add an extra layer of fabric on the inside as a facing, especially if you have a more lightweight fabric. And I decided to go ahead and use a contrast fabric. So mine is probably a little bit more fancy looking <laughs> than it's intended to be on the inside. But this is supposed to be folded over and then top stitched in place. And then these edges are just meant to be folded in. I will say that it's easier to bring it together more neatly because this whole section is stitched in when it's the other way around. So it's sort of folded right sides together and stitched along these edges. And then when you flip it round, these little side edges start to already fold into where you want them to be, that kind of five eighths inch seam allowance. So I feel like this one was just gonna be a little bit more straightforward if I use the standard construction technique. But again, I went off the map. I wouldn't be unhappy with the way it looked if I hadn't. I just think this is even more fun. So I was happy that I went with that. If you've been following my channel for a while, if you've seen a lot of the things that I've made, you might recognize this fabric. This is the fabric that I used for the lining of my Kelly Anorak, which is another closet core patterns pattern. That is just a coincidence. It's just fabric that I had left over that I wanted to use up. So this is just scraps from that project left over. And I felt like the colors worked really well together, but it's a happy accident that it turns out it's the same pattern company. Now, as far as installing these buckles, I actually found these really fun to put together. I'm always really into any kind of when you need to poke holes, put in hardware. It's some of my favorite parts of garment construction. It can feel a little bit stressful and intimidating, but I really don't personally find them too problematic as long as you do some tests on some tests, test fabric, obviously. But I really find them so satisfying to put together. I use my Prim Vario pliers to install the actual um, buckle here. So it's just like a, a jeans, button not buckle jeans button and um, and then this you just literally thread the fabric through it and you loop it back and then stitch it down there is a potential to have it as a more of adjustable strap if you had a little slider but this one didn't come with a slider and i thought to be honest they're gonna fit me and only me and they only need to fit me so i can just stitch them in place where they need to be and then i don't have to worry about kind of pulling them up and down and making sure they're not moving around while i'm wearing them it was a little bit more awkward, I will say, to tack all these layers down because this is already quite bulky. If you haven't noticed, I didn't mention my straps. I also chose to put the same lining on the inside. She does as well in the instructions for this one say you might want to double up if you do have a sort of more lightweight fabric and this is a more lightweight uh, corduroy, so I would have wanted to do that anyway. But I thought it would be fun to have that same fabric popping out on the inside. I did want to make sure as well that this lining fabric wasn't going to be visible on the outside when I'm wearing it because it's really fun and it's really cute, but I want it to be secret inside for me. I don't want to be flashing this floral stuff when I'm wearing this all the time. So the way I managed to do that is when I was cutting out this lining piece, I cut out the same strip, but I ended up trimming a quarter inch along the whole edge here of the lining piece. And then when I was stitching them together, I made sure that this was lined up right against the edge the other one was lined up right against the edge, so that meant that this fabric was kind of getting pulled either side. So then when I put it right side out, and I kind of turned it in, inside out of itself, 
there's a little bit of an edge of this main fabric coming around to the back and that just ensures that you're not going to end up in a situation where you've got the floral stuff peeking through the other side. So that's just a little tip if you wanted to do something like that yourself. I feel like that works really successfully and I saw that recommended in a bag pattern that I made and I thought yes. Mental note, I will do that whenever I'm trying to make any kind of straps. I don't want to be sort of visible, the lining visible on the outside. I did find that this was really awkward when I was trying to start off at the beginning of the seam because when you put the presser foot down to put the needle where it needs to be, the back of the presser foot actually leans back a bit because this is quite a lot higher than where the presser foot is naturally going to sit. So I actually used my hump jumper. This one's actually called the Gina Jig. I know that you can also use just like a plastic needle case as well if you've bought some new needles, but I like to have my little tool for the job. So if you imagine that this is sitting with the presser foot this way and the needle going in, you just put the hump jumper behind your needle. So that way it, it pushes the back of your presser foot up enough so that it's level. And then that way when you need to stitch across, it's not having to go upward before it goes across. So it just makes it less likely you're gonna have skip stitches or anything like that. It worked really well for me, so I thought I would give you that tip in case it's helpful for you as well. All right, let's talk pockets. So the Heyday Dungarees has a pocket on the front bib, sort of a, a center pocket on the front bib. It's got pockets lower down on the kind of front legs patch pockets. And then if I flip it over, it's also got pockets on the back, kind of on the butt. Constructing these pockets was hilariously more time consuming than probably the whole rest of the overalls. And I don't think I'm even exaggerating. I think I spent more time on these pockets than literally everything else. And that is just because putting them all together, and there's five of them, it's just a little bit time consuming. The way you are going to be constructing them, you start by taking the top flap, the sort of top of the pocket, folding it down and then folding a little edge underneath so that way underneath the seam is completely enclosed and you top stitch that in place. You then want to be folding and impressing these side edges, the bottom edge and this little angle. And I think the little angle was what made it more awkward than anything. You press all those in place and then once you've figured out where you wanna put them on the overalls, you top stitch around there with two rows of top stitching, one slightly apart from the other to make them really nice and reinforced. At the top of the pockets, there's also instructions to make them a little bit sturdier by doing either this kind of, it's kind of like a triangle, if you can see. I don't know how easy it's gonna to be to see. I'll put pictures up if I feel like I can't really show it very clearly on here. But you have kind of inverted triangle on the top of that pocket, which just means that when you put your hand into the pocket, put things into the pocket, that little edge of, se of the seam isn't likely to wear away as quickly. They also say that you can do a bar tack. Now, the illustrations just basically show you this little triangular wedge or a bar tack and say that you can use either of these techniques, but it doesn't tell you that it's a bar tack. And I feel like it would just been nice to have those words in the instructions for people who aren't familiar, because if you're seeing that you're wondering, oh, is that just a zigzag stitch? How do I do that? What kind of length and width stitch am I looking for? If you're newer to sewing and you haven't made bar tacks before, you might not recognize that that is a bar tack. And it's just so much easier to look stuff up if you have the words for it. So I would have preferred if they put that in the instructions, but you can probably figure out what it's meant to be. As far as the placement of these pockets, in the instructions and in the actual pattern pieces, they tell you where the pockets should be. But I never go by what the pattern tells me as far as pocket placement, because I know that where your pocket is placed is gonna be so different that what's gonna look sort of proportionate and normal depending on the length of your torso, your width, how round you are in different areas, and I will never, never go with what the pattern tells me for those things. So what I did was I made the whole overalls up, and the last thing I did was put the pockets in the right place. And I did a whole lot of fiddling. Again, this was, whole, this was part of the whole time-consuming element, which is partly my own fault, but I feel like if you wanna get them to look good, that's part of what it takes. But I basically pinned all these pockets in place to where I thought they should be, got my husband to come and take some photos, because especially from the back, it's really difficult to see what your butt is looking like, because if you're twisting to look at your back pockets, they're already going out of shape, and they're not looking like how they're going to when you're standing straight. So it took a lot of fiddling, and I must have stabbed myself with pins about 20 times. 
Once I made these up, I was curious to see how my pocket placement compared to what the pattern tells you to do. And for both the front and the back pocket, so kind of the ones on the legs, I ended up putting mine higher than what the pattern suggests. The front bib ended up being exactly where they suggested it to be, so that worked out for my own proportions. But yeah, the patch pockets, and I will say when I've seen a lot of people's versions, especially the front pockets, they do seem quite low down. And I wanna use these pockets. I wanna be able to put my hand into the pockets, get stuff in and out of them easily. My arms aren't crazy long, they're not crazy short, but I felt like where they were meant to be placed, it would have been very awkward for me to actually use these pockets. And for me, I just feel like the, the way that I've placed them look better than where the pattern originally suggested. Now for the Jenny overalls, there was a few differences. One thing that I really liked is that for the back pocket, so where they put the placement for the back pockets, I don't know how easily you'll see these things, but they had a suggested back pocket placement and they really specified in the pattern piece that it was suggested. It wasn't saying this is necessary where it needs to go. And in the instructions, they recommend doing a based stitch of the pocket just to make sure that it's where you're gonna want it to be when you're actually putting the trousers on. And for me, that just makes a lot more sense and I really agree with that general concept. I didn't bother basting it in place because I just thought I'm going to probably move it all around and see where it wants to go and where it's going to suit my body, particularly with these because they're really fitted on the bum. If you have a more fitted trouser, and to be honest, I think probably any trousers, where you place the pockets on the back makes such a huge difference. It can make your bum look wider, longer, narrower, just bigger overall or smaller overall. And I think it's, it's not about, you know, what's the better shaped bum or the bum that you're going for. I mean, our butts are what they are, but I feel like we can at least make them look nice because I felt like these pockets fitted really well on the back. And I felt like putting the pockets in an awkward place made them look like they didn't fit very well. So I had my husband help me again with the placement of these, but this time we used some double-sided wonder tape. So wonder tape is a sort of a double-sided sticky tape that you can put on your clothes when you're sewing stuff up. You can sew over it and it just washes out when you wash it. So it's really kind of easy to use. It's easy to get rid of. It's not going to mess up your fabric. Obviously, if you've got super delicate fabric, you might want to do a test, but I've never had problems with any of the fabrics that I've used it for. And it's basically, what's nice about it is it's double-sided tape, so you can stick the pockets on, but they're also not necessarily fixed forever. You can take them off and stick them on again and kind of move them around to try and get the pockets where you think you want them to be. Now for these back pockets, when I tried them on, I ended up having to move them down slightly compared to where the original pattern was, sort of the suggested pocket placement was. I know, and you know, if you've watched previous videos, that I have already altered the shape of this crotch curve. I have increased the rise on the back piece as well. So it's not really surprising that I might end up having to do some minor adjustments there with where the pocket's meant to be but I feel like it turned out to be a really good shape for my body, and so I'm really glad that I took the extra time to just manipulate, maneuver around to get that pocket where I wanted it. On a similar note, the straps that are on the back, it is suggested that you baste these in place and try them on before you actually do the final seam there. It's so just relieving to me. I love to know that Closet Core are thinking about those straps sitting flat, sitting how they're meant to, because you might have seen in my previous video, it really annoys me when the straps don't sit quite right on the back of overalls. And I've seen a lot of really popular patterns where I don't feel like the straps sit how they're really supposed to on the body. So these ones, if you stitch them in place, do a base stitch, and they're not sitting flat, they either need to be moved in or out or angled slightly, you can get the, the fit so it's gonna look really good when you're actually wearing the final garment. And as it happened, the sort of standard suggested placement was perfect for me, but easily could not have been. So I would always want to do a test like that if I was making a new pattern. But now that I've made these, if I was making them again, I know that I don't need to mess with that placement. If you can see as well, it's not always gonna be that easy to show, the back pockets are actually rounded. So they're not a kind of angled edge, it's rounded all the way around. And they have a really great design, a really clever design about how you get those to fold up from when you're kind of folding the edges in. They get you to do a row of basting stitches, which is where you're gonna be wanting to 
sort of iron them up, which is five eighths of an inch from the end. You do a basting stitch all around that curve, and then you can pull the basting stitches a little bit, like gathering, slightly gather that curve to allow those back pieces to fold in really nice and neatly, and then you clip into the little curves on the inside to make sure that it lies flat when you're gonna be stitching it in place. But I felt like that was such a clever way to make sure that you're able to get a neat edge, especially when you're folding in, you're gonna end up with little odd angles, which is what I would expect would happen when you're trying to stitch a rounded pocket when you're folding the ends in, if you know what I'm saying. The front sort of side pockets on the front of these overalls, if you imagine this is like the front of the bib, this is the normal kind of jean style kind of pocket that you've got here. This was really fun to put together. I always enjoy installing this kind of a pocket where you've got like these facings on the inside of the pocket. And this is where she recommended using a different fabric because you can use a different fabric, this is not gonna be visible on the outside of the garment, to do the pocket bag. And that's where I first decided to use this kind of fabric and then I decided after that, I'm just gonna go with this fabric and have it on all kinds of pretty insides of the garment. But you have this nice, pretty con um, pocket bag on the inside. This lapped zipper, I can show you on the side. It was surprisingly easy to put together. And this little um, extra tab at the top of the waistband. I didn't even look at their website where they've got extra additional instructions because I felt like the instructions in here made it really clear. But I was surprised with how well that came together. I think doing the zipper with the pocket here, I wasn't sure if this was gonna be really awkward to deal with. But if you follow the instructions, I actually found it really satisfying to bring together, if I'm honest. And yeah, on the whole, I feel like it turned out really neat. It's really not hard to take these on and off when you're gonna be getting undressed and going to the bathroom. The only thing I would say is on the inside, you have this little fly shield. This is gonna stop the metal from touching your body when you're wearing these and stop you from accidentally zipping up your skin, which you don't wanna do. This, when it was put together, it was stitched along at the side and then it was just left, left loose like a flap, which I don't like. Fly shields are usually tacked down, stitched down in place, because otherwise when you're putting them on, if this isn't necessarily flipped over, you're gonna end up zipping your skin. And the whole point is it's supposed to be sitting against to block this from your skin. So I chose to do a bar tack and that was not in the instructions. That was just something I wanted to do to secure this fly shield down. I stitched it just to this seam here. It's not stitched to the outside of the trousers. I didn't want it to be visible on the outside, but that just makes sure that it's gonna stay nice and flat and it's gonna stay closed. So when I'm putting these on and off, I don't have to be pulling the extra bit over to avoid zipping myself into it. Now getting down to the hem on these, the Jenny overalls are really wide leg trousers, so they had a very deep hem. It's like a two inch hem, which I love. I feel like that makes so much sense with the proportions of these overalls. And it has a very retro feel to it. And you do, of course, sort of stitch that up on the inside to secure everything so that you don't have any of the raw edges. But it was nice and easy to put together. I did end up having to take quite a bit of length off of the bottom of these trousers, which surprised me. So I am five foot six. This pattern says that it's designed for somebody who's five foot six. So I wasn't expecting to have to make any kind of big adjustments as far as the fit from that point of view. I did lengthen the rise by half an inch. So bear that in mind, I added half an inch that was gonna need to come off of the bottom of the trouser. But I ended up having to shorten the bottom of the hem by three and a half inches, just so that when I was wearing it, it wasn't touching the ground. I didn't wanna have it necessarily too high or cropped, but I wanted to be able to wear flip-flops with it and not have it dragging on the ground. So I had to take three and a half inches off, and if you account for the half of an inch rise that I added, that's still half an inch, or sorry, so that's still three inches that I would have had to remove from these if I hadn't altered the rise. Obviously, when you're talking about somebody's height, that can be, part of it's gonna be their torso, part of it's gonna be their legs, and maybe I have shorter legs in proportion to what this was designed for. They might have also been wanting to give you the option of wearing it with heels, so maybe you can have them that little bit longer, but just bear that in mind, you might wanna look at the length. I mean, I always just adjust the hem when I'm doing the final sort of finishing touches, and these are wide leg and they're really wide all the way down, so it didn't massively alter the fit on the whole. I could have shortened them higher up in the leg, but I don't think it would have made a difference, because they are honestly like just pretty straight down the line from pretty high up on the thigh. 
The Heyday Dungarees, they recommend that you actually roll the hem up. So you can obviously finish it, and if you want to turn the hem up and stitch it in place, you can. But they recommend going for a, a rolled hem that you just roll it up, you know, two, three times to get it the length that you want it. I did not really like the idea of rolling up my hem every time I'm putting these trousers on and hoping that it stays in place. It's quite a sort of heavyish weight, medium to heavy weight linen, and I felt like this could be just constantly unrolling and driving me a little bit crazy. So I decided to go ahead and do a permanent rolled hem. Amy Nicole Studio, who has a YouTube channel and an Instagram channel and a pattern company, she made a video about how to do a permanent rolled hem, and I followed her tutorial. It worked really well. I will link it down below. Anything I've mentioned that's not from this video, I will link in the description box below. But basically, you're just turning the hem up a couple of times. It's slightly more complicated than that, but that's the general gist. And then you just stitch in the ditch where you've rolled this up, but not all the way to the top. If you go all the way to the top, it's gonna to look too flat and peculiar. Oh, it does not wanna focus, I'm sorry guys. But yeah, you leave a little bit at the top so that it's not stitched all the way to the end. And that makes it look like you've just rolled it, but it's permanently the length that you want it. So that was definitely something I would recommend if you're making these overalls and you wanna roll them up, but you don't wanna to have to worry about having to roll them every single time you put them on. There was also just a minor, I almost wanna call it a typo, incorrect wording on the Heyday dungarees. Not a big deal, but I'm just telling you all the things that I found and that kind of stuck out to me. They talk about doing top stitching in certain areas of the Heyday dungarees, and it's clearly you top stitch if you want to, so if desired, but they put if required, top stitch if required, and they did that in a couple of points in the instructions. Top stitching, I wouldn't really say is generally gonna be required, particularly when you're looking at like side seams and leg seams and things like that. Yes, top stitching can make things a little bit more secure, kind of like a faux welt pocket kind of situation, but I don't think that these require that and I don't think that they're suggesting that they do. They certainly don't tell you when they would be required and when they wouldn't be required. I think they meant to say top stitch if desired. So if you're wondering and you're thinking, do I need to top stitch? I've seen these instructions and it says if required. It's if desired, do the extra step if you want that look. If you're not bothered about the look, leave it alone, they will be fine. Now the biggest upside I will say of making the Heyday dungarees, the thing that was the most pleasant about the whole sewing experience is it was such a quick project to put together. I've heard people say that and I thought, yeah, but I'm not that quick of a sewer. Honestly, these came together so, so fast. If I hadn't put all those pockets on, Honestly, I could have probably done the whole thing in like an afternoon, but I did do the pockets, so they took a little bit more time, but they really were very speedy project and super beginner friendly, I would say, really, really easy. Though I would recommend following the tutorial for the facing, just for the inside of the overalls, if you are thinking of making these, because I really do think that it just makes the finish so much nicer, and it also makes it a lot easier to put in those loops. If you're going for buttonholes at the front, then you probably don't need to worry about it. But if you want to do those loops at the top of the bib, go for the facing tutorial that I'll link down below and you will have these together in no time, looking really professional, looking really neat, and you will be so happy with them. I know I'm really happy with how these turned out. I feel like they look really great and I think they're gonna be so, so fun to wear. The Jenny overalls were always going to be that little bit more of an involved project. I knew that going in. I was going to be working on the fit, doing a muslin fit to make sure that I got the trousers right. There's a lot of additional construction techniques. So they're a bit more, I would say, involved. It's a little bit more of a proper overalls look at the end. And that was what I wanted. That was what drew me to them. I really liked those cool, professional, sort of classic overall look. And I found it so, so satisfying to bring all those bits together. The way Closet Core do their instructions, I really love. They will generally get you to focus on one little element at a time. So my husband said this, and I think he's totally right. It's kind of like building Lego or Legos. So if you're doing, say, the front bib, you first make the bib, you then make the bib pocket, and then you stitch them together. And then that little section is done. You put it to one side. You then make your little back pockets, those are done, you put them to one side. You make your pocket with the pocket bag that's going to go into the side seam. You stitch all that together. Once that re that's ready, the next step is installing it into the trousers. And I think this probably sounds like 
all sewing instructions, but honestly, I feel like the way they separate stuff out, you feel really satisfied when you finish one little element of the construction and you can feel like you're really getting there step by step. I really enjoyed making these. I felt like they were so much fun to put together. The finished result just looks so slick, so professional, so spot on. I am just so chuffed, honestly. I am delighted with how they look. And I feel like overall as a winner, yes, it was a more involved project, but that's what I knew wanted to get my teeth stuck into this one. The winner for me for the round two of the dueling dungarees has got to be the Jenny overalls by Closet Core Patterns. Their instructions were great. The techniques, though more involved, were really easy to understand. They give you those extra resources if you want them from their website as well, if you're struggling with any of the trickier bits. I just feel like they always nail it with their construction. I'm a big fan of Closet Core Patterns construction techniques and this one was no exception. It was a joy, honestly, a joy to put together. You are not gonna have to wait too much longer to see me in these overalls because I wanna get them on and I wanna start wearing them and I wanna start sharing pictures on Instagram and I can't do that until I finish these videos. So it's not gonna be too much longer until you can see the final result of the big winner of the Clash of the Patterns, the Dueling Dungarees keep tuned to this channel make sure you are subscribed if you want to see that video and you're going to want to see it if you've been following along this far for sure give me a like if you enjoyed the video today and leave me a comment have you had good and bad construction techniques when you're making something whether it's simpler or a more complex garment do you ever maybe look at the instructions or tutorials and techniques that somebody else uses on a different pattern or on a blog I think it's so interesting how we each interpret patterns and what we enjoy about the different construction elements. So tell me your own thoughts and I hope to see you all again before long. Bye!